In this video, I'm going to prove that the sample variance S squared is an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. This will give some motivation for why we divide by n minus 1 and not n in the sample variance formula. Let x1 through xn be independent observations from a population with mean mu and variance sigma squared. The mean or expectation of each x is equal to mu, and the variance of each x is equal to sigma squared. Here are a few tools that I'm going to take as a given and use without proof. I'm going to use the fact that the expectation of a sum is the sum of the expectations, and I'm also going to use the fact that if we want the expectation of a constant times a random variable, we can take that constant outside of the expectation. We're also going to need this handy relationship. The variance of a random variable is equal to the expectation of the square of the random variable minus the square of the expectation. This is a relationship we've looked at previously, and it is useful in some calculations, but it's also useful in theoretical work. We'll see that in this proof, we'll need the expectation of x squared. And here, the expectation of x squared, if we rearrange this, this is going to equal the variance of x, which is sigma squared, plus the square of the expectation of x, which is mu squared. In the proof, we're also going to need the expectation of the square of the sample mean. And for that, we're going to rearrange this relationship. The expectation of x bar squared is equal to the variance of the sample mean x bar which we've learned previously is sigma squared over n, plus the square of the expectation of x bar. And on average, the sample mean equals the population mean, so the square of the expectation of x bar is just mu squared. We're going to use these relationships in the proof. We need to show that the expectation of the sample variance s squared which is the expectation of the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared divided by n minus 1 is equal to sigma squared, the population variance. To make the slides a little less busy, I'm going to omit the limits of summation, but we'll always be summing from 1 through n. Also, at first, I'm going to work out the expectation of just the numerator and ignore the n minus 1 for now. This will also make the slides a little less busy, and we'll be able to finish it off quickly once we get the expectation of the numerator. We need to find the expectation of the sum of x sub i minus x bar squared. First, let's square this out. When we carry out that multiplication, we end up with the sum of x sub i squared minus 2 times x sub i times x bar plus x bar squared. Now let's carry the summation through. At this point, the important thing to notice is that with respect to this summation, x bar is a constant. When we sum from 1 to n, x bar is the same for all i. So we can take out this 2 out front, and we can take out this x bar out front as well. Also, on this summation, x bar is a constant, and we are adding it up n times, so this is going to be n times the square of x bar. And we're left with this. Note that x bar is the sum of x sub i over n. And so the sum of x sub i is simply n times x bar. Here's what we're left with. This middle term works out to 2n times x bar squared. And here we're adding n times x bar squared, so we're left with minus n times x bar squared. Now let's carry the expectation through. Since the expectation of the sum is the sum of the expectations, we're left with the sum of the expectation of x sub i squared minus the expectation of n times x bar squared n is a constant here, so we can take this outside of the expectation. Now we need the expectation of x squared and the expectation of x bar squared. For that, we'll go back to the relationships that I brought up earlier. 
the expectation of the square of each x is equal to sigma squared plus mu squared. And the expectation of the square of x bar is equal to sigma squared over n plus mu squared. If we substitute in the expectation of x squared and the expectation of x bar squared, we're left with this. Sigma squared and mu squared are constants, and we're summing them up n times. So we're left with n times sigma squared and n times mu squared. And here, if we multiply through by n, we're left with sigma squared and n times mu squared. These terms cancel, and overall we're left with n minus 1 times sigma squared. So we just spend a fair bit of time showing this. But what we are looking to find is the expectation of the sample variance s squared. Here n minus 1 is a constant, so we can take this outside of the expectation. And now we're almost done. This is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times this expectation, which we just showed to be n minus 1 times sigma squared. And so we are left with sigma squared. So the expectation of the sample variance s squared is equal to sigma squared. We just showed that when we divide by n minus 1, we end up with an unbiased estimator of the population variance sigma squared. If instead we divided by the sample size n, that would result in a biased estimator of the population variance.